What matters most about any type of food isn't the macronutrients and the caloric proportions, but actually the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes, and what effect it has on your entire organism. You should always try to maximize the micronutrient component of your diet, but you know, that's not always possible because of seasonality, location, and the overall reduction of soil quality in the world. I'm going to share with you some of the supplements everyone should add to their diet that would address these common deficiencies. I also have to add a massive disclaimer, before taking any any supplement you have to be aware of the overall condition of your health and what you're individually most efficient of the responsibility is solely on you not me if you don't have a lot of knowledge about these topics then you should consult your doctor first but here we go, some supplements that would most likely benefit your health and energy. Omega-3s. Omega-3s are essential fatty acids that the body can't produce itself and thus they need to be derived from diet. Omega-3s need to be kept in balance with the omega-6s. Unfortunately, that balance can be easily tipped off as every amount of omega-6 requires triple the amount of omega-3s to reduce the negative effects. The more omega-6s you consume, the more omega-3s you need as well. Sources of omega-6 fatty acids are vegetable oils, corn oil, peanuts, and some cereals. Naturally, omega-3s can be found in fatty fish such as salmon, herring, mackerel, and sardines, but also in some plant-based sources like chia seeds, hemp seeds, and flax seeds. However, fish has DHA and EPA, which promote brain functioning, fight inflammation, support bone health, and increase physical performance. Fish oil can be used easily as a capsule or liquidized. A healthy dose of omega-3s is 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams per day. Research shows that more than 5,000 milligrams doesn't seem to have any added benefits. For EPA and DHA, you should aim for a minimum of 250 milligrams and a maximum of 3,000 milligrams per day in a combined dose. Krill oil might simply be a more potent and bioavailable source. If you're consuming these oils, then you have to make sure you use wild-caught sources to avoid mercury poisoning. Plant-based supplements for omega-3s include hemp seed oil and wheat germ. Vitamin D3. It's not actually a vitamin, but it gets synthesized into a hormone once inside the body. Vitamin D3 governs almost every function within us, starting from DNA repair and metabolic processes. It fights cardiovascular, autoimmune, and infective diseases. Of course, the best source would be to get it straight from the sun, but that's not always possible because of seasonality and location. An average person should take at least 2,000 international units of vitamin D, but it would also depend on how much exposure you get to natural sunlight. Magnesium, another foundational mineral. It comprises 99% of the body's mineral content and governs almost all of the processes. Magnesium helps to build bones, enables nerves to function, and is essential for the production of energy from food. Some people who are depressed get headaches because of this deficiency. Recommended daily allowance for magnesium is 400 milligrams per day. If you're physically active, then pay especially close attention to this because you may get muscle cramps and other problems. Now, these are the three main supplements I would add to any diet. But there are other micronutrients that are very important for optimal health and energy, such as potassium, vitamin K, B vitamins, and calcium. However, you would want to supplement them only if you're actually deficient of them, because consuming too many of certain nutrients will hinder other metabolic processes and the absorption of your minerals. So you have to be quite considerate before supplementing these micros. Estimated daily minimum for potassium is 2000 milligrams per day, and the RDA is 4700 milligrams per day. You shouldn't worry about eating too much potassium unless you're taking supplements. If you don't consume a lot of green veggies or avocados in a day, then consult your doctor before taking potassium. Zinc is an essential mineral involved in cell growth, protein synthesis, and protecting the immune system. RDA for zinc is 8 to 12 milligrams per day. The upper limit for zinc a day should be under 100 milligrams because you may get nausea, vomiting, and reduced immune functioning. Oysters are the most abundant sources of zinc with a massive 74 milligrams per serving. Other sources are beef, poultry, and some nuts. If you're a male, then you should pay close attention to your zinc consumption because it's one of the most crucial minerals for testosterone. But if you're eating a lot of seafood and red meat, then you probably don't need to supplement it. The RDA for vitamin K is roughly 60 to 120 micrograms, and the optimal level is roughly 1000 micrograms. This applies to both vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. B vitamins are also essential, and they 
can be most found in animal products. If you're already eating a whole foods based diet that includes the consumption of meats, then you probably don't need to supplement it either. However, vegans are most commonly deficient of B vitamins, so you should check it out if you are a vegan. Iron is needed for the production of energy, but overdosing iron can be toxic, so consult your doctor first. Iron deficiencies are more common on diets with little or no meat. Calcium deficiencies are common in older people or those who don't consume a lot of dairy. Before supplementing, you should know whether or not you're actually deficient. Taking a multivitamin is also counterproductive if you don't know what you're actually deficient of. Now, I'll move on with some other supplements that aren't detrimental or essential for your health, but they still have an empowering effect on your performance and energy levels. You'll definitely experience some sort of a boost. Creatine enhances ATP production and allows for muscle fibers to contract faster, quicker, and makes them overall stronger. Creatine has been found to improve cognitive functioning as well, which improves mental acuity and memory. Naturally, creatine can be found most in red meat, but it can be also taken as a supplement. It's very cheap and easy to consume, and you don't need to consume any more than 5 grams per day to get the effect. To have a healthy gut, you need to have a well-functioning microbiome. Sauerkraut, raw milk, yogurt, unprocessed meat, all have good bacteria in them. Probiotics are alive microorganisms in a pill that transport these good bacteria into our gut for improved digestion and immune system. Prebiotics are different, they're not alive, but plant fiber that feeds the bacteria. They're indigestible parts of the vegetable that go through the digestive tract into our gut where the bacteria then eat them. If you don't eat a lot of vegetables, then you should still get a lot of fiber into your diet and use a pro and prebiotic. The thyroid gland is incredibly important for our health because it regulates the functioning of our entire metabolism. A low functioning thyroid will slow down the metabolism, cause hypothyroidism and many other diseases. Promoting thyroid functioning can be done by taking iodine supplementation or eating a lot of sea vegetables. The daily requirements for selenium can also be met with eating only 2-4 to four brazil nuts a day. If you don't know which products and brands to buy, then I've listed out some safe supplements in my Amazon Influencer shop. It includes the ones I mentioned here, but there are others that will give you even more energy. Like I said in the beginning, you should focus on getting your nutrition on point before you start taking any supplement. And secondly, you don't need to take all of these supplements, only the ones you're most efficient of. Micronutrients have actually a much greater impact on how you feel and how you perform more than you think. Things like your decision making, your cognitive functioning, your emotions, they're all linked to this and that's why you have to pay quite close attention to them. If you want to learn other ways of optimizing your physiology and mindset, then check out my free ebook called The Body Mind Empowerment Handbook. But other than that, click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well for similar videos. Thanks for watching, my name is Seem. Relax man. Stay optimized, stay empowered. I'm just trying to grab some nuts.